welcome to another edition of uh, Bob's Odd Jobs. Um, today I'm going to be talking about um, the Little Hippo uh, Toddler Alarm Clock. Uh, it's a it's an alarm, basically an alarm clock that uh, notifies your little one when to wake up using a light. It has uh, multiple functions on it. It's got a uh, time, obviously, alarm. It's got a sleep time and a wake time. Uh, when it uh, sleep time, it doesn't do any color on the light unless you have a night light set. But the eyes will close, and this little face will look like it's sleeping. Um, for wake time, uh, it has a yellow light that will turn on a half an hour before wake up time, and then a green light that turns on at the time uh, to wake up. Uh, it has sounds, and it has night light, and it has a nap time you can set in it. So it does have a lot, a lot of different functions that you can use in it. Um, personally, um, I don't like this clock. Uh, it's, it's, its functions are good for what, what, it's, what it's needed for, but it's really expensive for what you get. Number one thing that bothers me is you have no way of dimming the night light. So the night light actually goes around this entire circle here. You can see I can change the color here. Blue. Um, the, and it's very bright, especially in a, in a toddler's room. Um, so I've covered it in white electrical tape, and that seems to have dimmed it in, um, to a decent level at least. Um, the second feature I really don't like about this light is the wake-up time. Uh, when you set your wake-up time, say you set it for 8 o'clock, um, you'd expect it to, tur it to turn green at 8 o'clock. It does turn green at 8 o'clock, but at 7.30 it turns yellow. And it's a, that yellow light t tends to wake up our little one. Uh, so, and there's no way of changing that. It, it's, uh, so we've just, we just told our little one that, or we set it so that uh, at the yellow light is when our daughter is time to wake up. Um, th that, those two features alone, not able to dim this light and the wake up time um, half hour before, makes, for me, makes this clock not worth it. The other thing about this clock is it has sounds. The sounds are very poor quality. There's only three. Um, I think white noise waves and some lullaby. Um, it's, I don't picture many people using the sound on this clock, but it is, it is there. It's just a uh, very poor quality sound. Um, my last problem with this clock is it has a little battery here. It's a CR um, watch battery in the back here. Uh, and I've already replaced it once already, and it, it, the battery life is very poor. It's, it's not like you can, you can't, you can't unhook it from the power and use the clock without the battery. Um, the battery is just there to protect the settings in the clock when it gets unplugged. Now, there's times that um, we've we've moved this clock or we've unplugged it, and we plug it back in, and, and it, the settings aren't kept. So I'm wondering why the battery's levels are so uh, so short short acting. I really don't know. I think it might have something to do with uh, the quality of this clock. This clock is just cheap plastic, made, probably made in China. Um, we paid, I think, $70 for it. It's not worth $70. Uh, maybe in function, but in quality, not at all. Um, the, the connection in the power cord is loose. I've noti I noticed it um, last week, actually. Uh, you can see it's turning off now. There's something, there's something in the clock. There, it's, it's just turning on and off. There's something, it, there's something broken or loose inside here. I, I'm guessing it's a solder joint. There it is. So, uh, so I have a feeling that that is why our battery level isn't. It's probably constantly switching between battery and power. And, uh, and I think this is this is uh, just poor quality. It's it's really it, it's a really light, cheaply made clock. Um, anyway, so my job today is I'm going to take this clock apart, and I'm going to try and resolder the joint here. Um, I have a feeling if it's just a solder, we'll see what happens. There's just four um, covers. Uh, you can see them, they're molded into the plastic in the back. I'm pretty pretty confident these are the screw covers. I'm just going to try and pop these out with a screwdriver. If not, I could drill them out and just cover this up with some white tape after. You ask, why don't I just buy a new clock? Well, these clocks are expensive, like 70 bucks for one of these. And there's other versions of these types of things. There's maybe as cheap as $40. It's still it's expensive for what you're getting. I'm sure there's better ways of doing this, but I'm not going to go out and buy another clock when I might be able to fix this one. Anyway, let's take this thing apart and see what we can what we can do.
Um, this is basically the button uh, control board and the um, and the power. Um, all of the other uh, chips for memory um, to uh, control the functionality are in the, in the other side of the clock. So I don't I don't need this part of the clock, so I just set it aside. Um, but I've, I'm trying to to look here if I see any cracked solder joints on my power um, connector here. I don't see any. Um, and when I put this in and I and I wiggle it, I don't see any any cracked power. Any cracked solder? I might, I might just resolder these, these joints anyway. Um, the other thing that could be causing that is the, uh, the spring, that this that this pushes against when it's inside here. But I, I doubt it's the spring because it feels it has a good connection when it goes in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of solder and we'll see what happens. insert the power connection into one of these there's a little spring um, that that presses the side of the um, the power supply and then there's a rod that goes down the middle now I feel like the spring is good but I'm gonna just I'm gonna just give it a little pick and see if I can bring it out bring it out a little bit here just bend it out a little bit further See if I can get it right. Just trying to give it a little bit of a tighter connection. Thank you. 
So, um, as you can see, we took the clock apart. There's a little bit of damage, but not much. I mean, it's not like it's, it's a big deal, but it seems to have uh, resolved the soldering and the little bending of the spring seems to have resolved my uh, my issue of the loose connection. It's not doing it anymore. I don't want to move it too much because it'll break it, but it seems to be working. And um, outside of that, uh, it's just a, another another one of my uh, odd jobs. Uh, thanks for watching. And don't forget